Hello everyone, my name is Tal and I'm the Product Marketing Manager at BigView and I want to welcome you for today's workshop. Thank you so much for joining us today. Please write in the chat where you're from and if you know BigView, so we will know that you're here. And in the meantime, I just want to note that this workshop will be recorded and available for watching after the live event. And as always, we will have a Q&A session at the end, so all of your questions will be answered. So today, uh, in this workshop, we will learn how to engage, compel, and hunt, and obsess your audience. And for that, I invited Jez Ray. He's building your speak performance skills and confidence. So hello, Jez. How are you? Wonderful. Thank you, Tal. And all the better for seeing you, of course. Thank you very much. So customer engagement client engagement, audience engagement, phrases that trip off the tongue in business, in your business, in my business. And we we nod our heads in agreement. We tick all the boxes, job done. We deliver engagement to our audiences. But do we? What do you actually mean by audience engagement? And, and indeed, why stop simply at engagement? Well, stop for a moment to consider Consider what stands between us, between you and our audiences. Other, of course, than this looking glass of a laptop that we all now have in front of us and the gorgon eye of a camera that sits atop it. Your audience are surrounded by that transmedia bubble every moment of every day. Advertising, news feeds, alerts, pounding their senses 24-7. That bubble is between you and your audience. So why, why should they pay any attention to you other than just for a fleeting moment? What else can we do to go further when delivering our presentations, when putting together our workshops, our videos, our YouTube channels, our podcasts? How about we engage, then compel, then haunt and even obsess our audiences? Your mission, should you choose to accept it, cue music for Mission Impossible, for those who remember the series from many years ago, your mission is to engage with Echo, to engage, to compel, to haunt and obsess. Engage your audience, compel them to keep listening, haunt them with some form of emotional engagement and obsess them with knowledge so they keep coming back. And we'll take those one by one in this session. Let's focus immediately on engage with an exercise also to bring this to life and ask, where does, where does nudity fit into all this? When we engage, really engage, we create, we create an instant reaction, a reaction where our audience's brains say, I really need to pay attention to this. It's it's primal, it's instinctual, it's a pattern of behavior based on instinct, such as an instinctual survival mechanism, a survival response from deep, deep, deep in our amygdala. The part of the brain that sets off the fight or flight response, the one you probably all know so well from public speaking. Bright colors, a flash of, a flash of nudity, perhaps, always gets attention. So what examples can we look at that could trigger such an instant reaction? A dramatic change to the tone of your voice, a change in your on-screen persona will likely wake up your audience from their slumbers, at least for a moment. Well, what happened? What, what did I miss? What, what is this going? I'd better pay attention. Or we can bring in the visual. Now, we've known each other for a minute or two, so there's an expectation of what you're seeing, but we could dramatically change that. Give me two seconds. So I could now appear dramatically different to what you were used to. What was the norm is now totally different and would take you a while to get to get used to it, to accept this, this change. It makes you think, what on earth has happened? What's different? What have I missed? And interestingly, in Mission Impossible, they always seem to wear sunglasses, didn't they? And I'll remove this now, because otherwise it's going to get exceedingly hot. Maybe 
Maybe it's the language that you use. Again, we've got to know each other a little bit, and there's an acceptance of the level and the type of language that I'm using in talking to you. But it, you could change that instantly. A transmogrification of your language as you endeavor to elucidate the difference between the eschatological and the scatological, as you strive towards a more eleemosynary society, may have your audience, or indeed you, scattering for their dictionaries. Assuming, of course, this is not your, your normal speech pattern, and it's, it's not mine. So here's an exercise. Let's now experiment with engage. What can you do to experiment with engaging that your audience, creating that initial engagement? Dig out of your memories, your memories right now, of something that you have previously delivered. Maybe it's um, a presentation that's stuck in your mind, that little clip, workshop content video content you put together, even perhaps that script in your head for when you are asked to introduce yourself at business meetings. Yeah, that one. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Ray. Would you care to take a seat and introduce yourself to the meeting? We've all got it, haven't we? That 30 second elevator pitch that just trips off. Now for a moment, muse on it. What is the norm for you? What is the normal for you? What is your audience expecting of you at that point? Now, let's experiment. What could you deliver differently? And let's, let's use the chat box here. As things occur to you, even if they appear absolutely daft, chuck them in the chat box. What is it that you could do really differently? Is it, is it the tone of voice? Is it is it the language that you use? Words like elimosinary are so beautiful and do actually encourage people to go away and look them up and find out what they mean and then start using them themselves. Is it, is it the visual? Is it a change that you've actually done? There's a, there's a, a UK program which you may well know called Monty Python because it's world famous and many, many years old. And there was a character on there that always used to appear with the phrase, and now for something completely different. Uh, he was seated at an organ console, and guess what? He had no clothes on. So once again, nudity was used to create shock and appearance, make something totally different to what you were expecting. What can you do that is different? After this, grab your phone your tablet, your camera, and of course, using Big View as your medium, record something in a really different style. There's another UK advert that encourages you to be more dog. And that's different, isn't it? But let's pick up on that. Be more dog, be more cat, be more engage, and be different. Let's get that, let's get that initial engagement straight away. So we've engaged. We've created a sense of engagement. We've engaged with our audience. And this is where so many presenters or video creators stop. But why stop there? What will compel your audience to stay with you? There's almost, there's almost a mystery flavor to it. Spoiler alert, mystery, a hint, a hint of something interesting just around the corner not quite knowing what is going to come next next exercise and let's let's use the chat box again if you are of a certain age you may have bought a weekly comic in your youth did did you buy a comic when you were young if you did yeah put it in the chat box Let, let's see what comics you used to buy in my childhood in the uk it was the dandy the Beano, and for my sister, a magazine called Jackie. Why was I so eager to get my weekly pocket money, about to say my hard-earned, but it was my parents' hard-earned money. Why was I so keen and eager to get my weekly pocket money from my parents to dash out and buy a comic? Because of the mystery, because of the intrigue, because of the cliffhanger. 
there was a character called Dennis the Menace in there that 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 was really really popular. He was getting into so many scrapes, and we just we just we just didn't know what he was going to get up to next. And that was the point. The intrigue of wanting to know what happened next would drive us to buy those comics. Let's put that in today's age and today's context. Who else here? And chat yes in the chat box if it's you. Who likes who likes to binge on box sets from time to time? Netflix, Amazon Prime, BBC iPlayer in the UK. Just chuck yes in the chat box if that's you. Are you a binge a binge watcher? And what do you like to watch? Let's just let, let let's just let's just chuck it in. What do you like to watch? Now, of course, the phrase Netflix and chill has certain connotations, language again, nudity again, but certain pleasure and satisfaction, language, even, even sitting with a glass of wine and seeing the episodes through to the end is a pleasure in itself. Yet, mystery and intrigue and cliffhangers abound. Are you also, like me, in the midst of a series that is not yet available on the full box set? You cannot get to every single episode. You have no choice but to await the release of the next episode. It is so frustrating. Are you champing out the bit, waiting for that next episode to appear? Chuck it in the chat box. What are you watching? What are you waiting to appear? Here in the UK, we have a brilliant series called Line of Duty, available on BBC iPlayer. It's a police drama series. It is cliffhanger after cliffhanger after cliffhanger. The BBC know we are compelled to watch every week. We want to what happens next. We're, we really got to watch it. The BBC knows we are gasping for what happens next. What is around the corner? One more. Any anyone else watching um Snowpiercer on Netflix or has watched Snowpiercer on Netflix? If you're a Snowpiercer fan, again, let's just chuck yes in the chat box. The penultimate episode a couple of weeks ago was due on I think it's, yeah, it's Tuesdays. We could pick it up in the UK, and I'd been hanging on the edge of my seat waiting for the ep next episode on the Tuesday. It got it got to the penultimate episode, and I woke up Netflix on the Tuesday and it came up with uh, effectively a message that the last two episodes would be shown together on the next week. So not just one week of suspense, but two weeks of suspense, champing at the bit on the Tuesday in the middle for my next episode to get my fix of Snowpiercer. And I had to wait yet another period for it to get to the end. It keeps us on the edge of our seat. It keeps us, it keeps us watching. Someone's kindly said, we always read the comics in the weekend paper. It's that, it's that anticipation. It's wanting to know what's going to come next. So we've nailed Compel. We've engaged and now we've nailed Compel. Or have we? Is there more? Tune in next week for the following episode. You've engaged your audience. You compel them to stay with you, at least at least for a while, while mystery, intrigue and cliffhangers take their part. Why go further? Let's go back to that that bubble that surrounds your clients, your customers, the audience that you are trying to reach. That transmedia bubble full of alerts, full of adverts, full of messages. Other organized adverts, other organizations' messages, you don't want them in someone else's bubble. You want them in your bubble. You want the media that surrounds them to be your bubble. Another exercise, just to get your brains thinking about this for a moment. And again, let's use the chat. What, what childhood experiences have stayed with you forever, have haunted you? What experiences from your childhood can you never, ever go back from? What childhood experiences can you still remember? 
if you're comfortable to do so and accept that it might not be the case but if you're comfortable to do so just put a few lines just put a vignette of you, your story in the chat box see what your story is i'll give you an example just to get just to get the brain moving just for just for a thought or two a colleague of mine is actually my my publisher my book and product publisher and i pinch his story um with a big smile on my face has to do with actually eating cauliflower when he was probably about seven or eight at home with his parents and he had a piece of cauliflower on the plate as he was eating his dinner and what he realized was that in the piece of cauliflower that he could see on the plate was half of a maggot just let that sink in for a moment the image on the plate what you are seeing, what he saw, was half of a maggot. So where's the other half of said maggot? He has never, ever been able to eat cauliflower ever since. The image of half a maggot and the potential of where the other half might be has haunted him all of his adult life. Another tiny example from my world, nettles. We all know as stinging nettles, you know, we brush against them and you wish you hadn't because you then got half hour of um, a bit of irritation. When I was a similar age, I remember riding a bike down the bottom of our garden, falling off into a pile of nettles and being covered head to toe in nettle rash. Never forgotten it, never will, never gone anywhere near a nettle ever since. Or go to another area, teenage relationships. What did you learn in your early relationships as a teenager that you have never forgotten? Perhaps we won't get those in the chat box. It might open up more, more than a can of maggots. So another exercise to add on to this, after you find three areas in your life, in your media bubble, where someone else's creation impacts on you, Maybe it was a story from a comic, something you've been watching on Netflix, which seems to be rather popular in the chat. Netflix is very popular. And what can you do to relate those to your presentations, to your videos? Mirror the scenario. You were influenced by them. It's in your bubble. What can you deliver? What examples can you? You talk about, describe, video, put into your present, put into your workshops that will have that impact on your audience. How can you surround your audience with the media that's in your bubble rather than the media that's in someone else's? It becomes it becomes a circular journey. It happens once, it happens again, it happens the next time. You are now getting them into your bubble, into your world. Okay, we've engaged, we've compelled, we've haunted. Surely that's enough. Let's add, let's add the final touch. Let's obsess your audience. What do I mean by that? We concluded haunt with, with a circular journey. It happens once, it happens again. What if it happens again and again and again and again? Brings your audience back time and time and time again to you. They never get tired. They always want to be there with you in your bubble. I can I can hear the naysayers. Oh, it doesn't happen. Yeah, you know, I watched um, that program for two series and and then lost interest. Uh, here's a, a small UK example. The Archers is a BBC daily radio programme of people in the fictional village of Ambridge on radio. Do you remember radio? So it's on radio and it was piloted on the 29th of May 1950. 1950. And it is still going every day ever since. My father was um, he was obsessed by it. He really was obsessed by it. He was so emotionally engaged with the characters and the storyline that he just had to listen to every episode. And if he couldn't, because my dad drove buses, so the shift work might not necessarily coincide with the live programme, 
he would listen to the omnibus on Sundays to catch up. So emotionally engaged with the story and what was happening that he came back to it again and again and again and again for the rest of his life. Step outside presentations, step outside radio programs. Let's use another example of obsessing, how we can be obsessed with something that sticks with us. Let's slip into a different part of, of your bubble. Musical earworms, snatches of music that never, ever, ever leave you. Anyone got any memories of music that stayed with them forever? And it doesn't take much to just bring it to the front of the memory and have it there. If there's a little, if there's a little snippet, again, let's just stick it in the chat box. Let's see what your memories of music are. If you allow me a, a personal story, I'll give you an example of what, why I'm talking about earworms. So in May, in May 2019, I had the privilege of, as a, you know, an amateur choral of singing the, an a cappella solo on the stage of the Carnegie Hall in the New York, New York City. As a choral society, we commissioned a work called Zimbe in 2008. And unlike most commissions, it actually did quite well. It went all around the world. It's been performed hundreds and hundreds of times. And there was a 10th anniversary concert in the Carnegie Hall, New York. And because we were the choral society that, that commissioned it, we got invited to take part in what was going to be, what was a pretty huge gig with quite a lot of choirs taking part. And what I will never forget is traveling home uh, out of London from a station, a Waterloo station in London, traveling home to where I live and the phone goes. And it's the composer, Alexander Lestrange. Jez, you, you know that bass solo on page 53 after the Alleluia? Yeah. Well, I know you know it because I know you sung it a few times. Do you want to at the Carnegie Hall performance? You're asking me as an amateur choral singer, just local choral societies, do I want to sing a cappella solo on stage at the Carnegie Hall in New York? Let me think about that for minus three seconds. So I did. The point of that is to mention that the that little extract of music, that little snippet that follows the Alleluia chorus and before another piece will stay in my brain forever. I am absolutely obsessed with it and it remains with me forever. So that snippet of music stays in my head. It will never leave me. How do we replicate that in our content, the knowledge that we deliver for our audiences? How can we put together content that obsesses them to stay with us so they want to keep coming back again and again and again? There's a few really interesting stories coming in. Thank you. I remember camping, eating, and leaving drinks everywhere. An uncle had left a drink open for bees to enter. One bee flew in, and him not knowing it, he drank it, and the bee, and he got stung. You'll never, ever forget that, will you? Playing double dutch, marshmallow tag, playing with mud pies, hot peas, and butter. Absolutely brilliant. These... These will never, ever leave you. And people talking about the sound of music, a spoonful of sugar. We can connect those two. I could, and yeah, you don't want me to sing it to you now, but couldn't we all just join in for the big view chorus for a spoonful of sugar from a sound of music? These childhood memories, these, these, these memories from years and years ago, because every time it pops up on the TV, because that, that film is played constantly, you've only got to be in the kitchen. And you hear, hear the story strains and before you can help it you're tapping your toes and you're getting along wrap up and then i'd be delighted to answer questions or build on any thoughts that you may have and again please chuck them in the chat now so that we can pick those up what we tried to do in this session what we have done in this session is go beyond just ticking the box that says audience engagement because in today's world, particularly with virtual communications, which will be with us forever, that is no longer enough. What we want to be able to do is engage our audience, absolutely, but also compel them, haunt them and obsess them. 
we want them engaged by creating creating an instant reaction something that that grabs them immediately that makes their amygdala go I've got to pay attention. It's really important. It might be, it might be appearance, it might be voice tones, something that really changes the game for them and makes them go, "Whoa, what happened? What, 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 what did I miss? What, 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 what have I got to pay attention to?" We want our audience compelled. We want to compel them to keep listening so that they stay with us. Now that might be mystery, intrigue. What happens next? The best, the best business, the best performance is around the corner. You're waiting for it. What's going to happen? We want them to be haunted with some form, some form of emotional engagement, something that resonates with us probably from our childhood. That vision of half a cauliflower staring at my colleague from the other side of the plate, the memory of a of a relative having swallowed a bee the sound of music coming through and we want them obsessed so they keep coming back again 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 and again so that we are in their bubble as they lead their lives so engage and obsess go the next stages beyond just audience engagement i'm jez Jez Ray, let's connect on LinkedIn. Just look up Jez Ray, G-E-S-R-A-Y. I'm the only one in the world you'll find. I'd be delighted to continue this conversation with you on LinkedIn. In the meantime, what questions do we have that, that, that I can answer for you? Okay, thank you so much, Jez. Um, we had a question earlier from Communication Nut. There it is. So we intrigue the viewers to watch more. Absolutely, Communication Nut. And it sounds like from the title you put on that this could be your world as well. Just, just presenting information isn't enough now, is it? The world of business, we probably all sat through incredibly boring presentations where somebody has stood up against a screen the other side of the room and given you 45 minutes of diatribe. Some still do it and try to do it virtually, but the world has gone. The world has changed. It's got to be engaging. Right? And this is where Big View comes in with the facilities and the abilities you've got to do things. Someone just said boring talks fall flat indeed. And now, of course, you can leave straight away, can't you? Absolutely disappear straight away. The world of B2B communications, talking with a colleague uh, the other day who runs part of an international chemical company, was saying that their B2B sales force, their productivity has gone through the roof because they no longer expect to jump in cars or airplanes to meet their clients and their clients no longer expect them to do the same. So the communication is now very much virtually and on screen. But we can be so boring on screen, can't we? You can all hear that flat monotone voice that you've listened to 73 times and now you just put your camera on and go and make off and go and make a cup of tea instead we've got to be engaging we've got to haunt them we've got to want them to come back to us so it's taking things in that next step beyond just 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 engaging the audience okay thank you um, feel free to ask more questions if you have them i just sent you in the chat big views information and also jazz information so you can contact him and learn so much more. Um, I just see that a lot of people are thanking you and saying that it's true. <laughs> um, okay. Is it, so it's a lovely phrase there. So true. Yeah, communication nut again. Thank you. Communication nut, we must get in contact. I see the audience fall, uh, fall like gnats around a light. And isn't that a fantastic image? They're just, just dancing, dancing around the light, aren't they? Ready, ready to dance off at any moment and, and ignore us. Oh, we have another question. Yeah. How can I get in front of people who will find relevance in what I have to offer? Now you come back to the core of public speaking and presentations. Know your audience. So my question back to you, Davarina, is, is who are you addressing? What are they interested in? How can you make what you are offering relevant to their world? That, I would suggest, is actually 
uh, research on the organization you're talking to, on actually talking to people in that organization. Even though, you know, a simple bit of, of hunting, Googling, and LinkedIn will give you quite a lot of info. And there are also, if you really go deep, there are personality profile tools where you can identify the actual characters that you're talking to and how they like you to deal with them. But at a top level, I suggest it's research and it's understanding what are the objectives. Your, your audience is under no obligation to listen to you. And one of the key things about any speaking, I would suggest, is that it's all about your audience. So if you understand what your audience is looking for, what your audience can take away, what will they benefit from from your from what you have to offer, that's your link into making it relevant. Okay, great. Um, I see that we have no more questions. So I want to thank you, Jez, for an amazing presentation and also for all of you for coming uh, and listening to us. And uh, this is it.